Hi, everybody. I'm Joe. I'm going to talk about two things today. I'm going to talk about a programming language called Pirate. Uh, it's spelled, as it appears here, uh, P-Y-R-E-T, uh, not pirate, like you're stealing things. Uh, and I'm going to also talk about Captain Teach. Captain Teach is the interface that you see here, um, and there's going to be more of it that you see. And it's a learning environment that we happen to have uh, be using Pirate in to be teaching people to program in Pirate. And we're using it in courses this fall. Okay? So I'm going to show you some Pirate programs, just at this interactions window. So if I type 3 and I run that, what do you think you should see? Four. <laughs> You're all wrong. All right. If I, if, I if I type a string literal and run that, what do you think I should see? OK, I'm a little bit better at implementing REPLs than that, but you know. Um, OK, so now, now let's get crazy. What, what if I type this? Two. Two is not a function. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. So I, <laughs> oh man, oh man, oh boy. So what could go wrong? What did I just do? I did this infix thing. What, what's the worst thing that could happen with, with having infix now? What do I have to figure out? Ah, right, right. Oh my gosh. Now, I, no one in this room knows what this program means. <laughs> There's no way. All right, what, what do we think? What do we think comes out? <laughs> all right. Okay, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> Pirate says, no, don't do that. Please disambiguate for us. We are not going to build up tables of operators that then become defunct when we add new operators later. No. Okay, so we, we actually have to do things like, say, I real oh whoa not hold down shift that's for sure. Actually, say I wanted it to be parenthesized that way. Okay, so that's a taste of pirate. We're doing things like infix syntax in pirate, and we're trying to do them sanely. So that's a, that's a taste of the kind of things that we're really worried about with pirate syntax. Okay, so let's jump back to some some slightly larger programs. So here's a function definition in pirate. Uh, this is uh, going to convert Fahrenheit to Celsius for us. Note that I've obeyed my rule about parenthesizing to disambiguate here. Uh, and this is a sort of Python-like syntax. I have this fun keyword, and then afterwards I'm doing an application. Uh, so what, what do you think this should produce when I run it? Yeah, better. That would be a really bad Celsius converter if it didn't. OK. Um, now, this I just wrote an example of an application. But uh, in Pirate, we really care about teaching students to test, and we care about testing in general. So we've attached a special form to function definitions uh, to, to put test cases right next to the function they're defined with. So after a function, instead of just ending it with end, you can say where. And then you can put test cases. And I'm using the special form is, which is a tester for two values to check that they're equal. Okay? So uh, if I run this thing, what I get back is, ah, vast, there be bugs. Uh, and uh, it gives me, you know, it points to the two places where, of course, these are wrong. Right? So what should these be to fix them? Right? Zero, and, zero and 100, right? Okay. So minus 100? Okay. All right. There we go. OK, great. So this is, this is what uh, simple unit tests look like in Pirate. We've attached these blocks, made the business syntactic part of function definitions. Question? So you can, you can cheat by always writing the wrong answer there, and you run it, and you see the answer in the right form. We'll get to that in the next, next tab. Oh, OK. All right. Um, OK, so what do we? Another, another, uh, another thing that, so I've, I've introduced this almost Python-like syntax for defining these functions. So one thing that we can ask next is, do we do the same thing as Python for defining local variables? All right, okay, so here I'm defining an intermediate C that's bound to the, the subtract 32 step. Um, and so this, this works as we expect. So this is, this is uh, really just variable intermediate here. But what if I did this in, in, say, an extra step? What if I said, all right, well, I want to do this, right? I want to create C, and then I want to update C, and then I want to return C. What do you think happens here? Good, good. That's the right answer, right? <laughs> okay. So if you define the same variable twice using equals, this really is a, is is like it's it's defined. Okay. Secrets out. Um, and it compares, uh, you know, checks to make sure that you haven't defined the same thing in a block. Okay. Um, so that's local va local variable definitions in Pyre. As opposed to variables, which I'm actually not going to talk about, but are, have a different syntax if you want it to be a mutable thing. Okay. Okay. So that's, that's the, the bare bones of functions. Let's uh, see a data definition in Pirate. Let's clear this out. All right. So here's a, bina here's a definition of a binary tree in Pirate. Uh, this actually is very, very close to what Eric, Eric presented um, when he uh, added, fixed the PLAI uh, data type thing. So this is, we say data, to give the name of the, the union of the types, 
leaf is a singleton. We aren't going to call a function when we construct it. We're just, it's, it's a singleton value. And then there's nodes, which have a, a value and then a left and right. Okay. Now, HTTP people, what's the first thing I should do after I write a data definition? There we go. All right. So data blocks also support where, and I'm just going to make this bigger for the moment um, so that we can see everything. OK, so here I have defined bin tree again, but I've written some examples. Uh, not all the examples are exactly right seeming, um, but they do at least and uh, satisfy these predicates that are created if, that say they are leaf, they are nodes. Okay. Um, it's a little weird that these things aren't exactly constructed maybe the way we expected. Certainly H33 looks a little weird uh, given what, what we might have meant uh, what we might have meant for having a binary tree. So let's just make sure that we can't screw that up. Okay. So oh, so now if I add that on there, okay, I, I, I failed the type check. And uh, actually, at runtime, uh, which is which, asked me a question about that later. Um, and we expected bin tree, and we got this value non node. Okay. So pirate lets you put annotations anywhere, uh, anywhere there's a binding position, uh, but doesn't require them. And it actually is checking all of these at runtime until December. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, a few more interesting things. Uh, how how do we do go about destructing these data? Um, so here's bin tree again, and then uh, we have a cases expression over leafs. What should this produce when I run it? Anybody? Yeah, there we go. Yes, these are almost wide enough. And similarly, we can, we can run and see nodes too. Now I want to give you a little bit of a, a tease of some of what's going on uh, in the background of Pirate. So most of this looks like uh, typical almost ML-like data definitions or PLAI-like data definitions. But hiding behind here also is the fact that we can access these values in a slightly different way. So if we look at this example, I'm creating a node here. I can actually have these checkbox anywhere. I decided not to do this one as a where. And what's going on here is I'm creating a node and I'm using dot access to get at the different pieces. So these aren't just ADT-like values that have functions as accessors or pattern matching to access them. They actually have fields. These are, these are fields on an object. Okay, so that's a taste of the language as you might, that you might, as you might see it as a programmer. Um, but I also want to talk about how we're teaching Pirate and how we're using it in our courses. Um, so I want to move to what is going to be the, uh, the interface that we're showing students for assignments in Captain Teach for programming in Pirate. Um, so let's imagine that we had to write a function over binary trees, uh, and we were going to write the, the size function over binary trees. So we're going to take in a binary tree and give out a number. Okay? And the data definition's been given to us in this assignment. We can't edit it. That's a data definition. What's the first thing I should do since I have my function header and my data definition? Assuming, what should I do? Card check. <laughs> I do have my production. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, the answer I wanted, and the Sumu gave correctly, was test cases. I actually shouldn't be writing the body of size right now. I should be writing test cases for size right now. And you'll notice that the body of size is not editable. I can't type here. I can type in this area, which is the where block of the size function, and I have this button below to submit size checks. I not only can, can try and run this program, which isn't going to do much right now because size is empty, but I can write test cases. Can anyone give me a test case for size? I heard this, and do, do we agree with these as two decent ones? Yeah, all right, all right. So let's submit these. Oh, oh, thank you. Oh, sure. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to submit this. Okay. And oh, it says I do. I want to submit this part for review. It's kind of interesting. So I, I guess, yeah. Why not? Let's submit this part for review. Okay. So what happened here? Ah, this window is too narrow. Um, I got these three tabs that showed up that all say reviews at the top. What could these possibly be? Any guesses about what these are? Other students' code. These are other students' test cases. So let's see. Let's find the one that I know is going to be the other guy whose window I have open. Um, and what I get here, and this is a little bit of a narrow window, so I apologize for this wrapping. But what I get is I get an editor that has, at the point of that student's test cases, a couple of prompts. I can say these tests correctly reflect this be the behavior that I expect. So the inputs and outputs are at least right. And let's see, let's look at these. 
there's a node, a node, it's two, there's a node, yeah, okay, so these are, these are good. Um, you know, they're all right. Uh, and then we can ask if they uh, actually represent all the kinds of inputs that we expect to get here, right? So they, they, are they sort of well designed? Did we cover the space? And I guess they sort of missed some. Yeah. Try deeper trees. Right. So I can submit that review. And it pops me back to the next review. And I actually can't do anything on my implementation until I'm done reviewing three, student, three other students' work. Yeah? So I have to give feedback to my peers before I can make progress on my work. Okay? Um, you run the I'm sorry? You run yeah. So actually right now these are all just going to give uh, errors because they all, they all are failing their contract checks right now. Um, but yeah, if there is an implementation there, you can, you can run it too and see, see what happens. And you can actually copy over your check block and put it in your actions and see if your tests pass on their implementation, things like that. Yeah. Okay. Um, so what happened to the other guy is, as long as I got the accounts right, he got some kind of an email that looked like this. This is just a, a canned email. And then when, when he goes and logs in, uh, he should see here that, oh, I have a review. Let's look at my review. Oh, that's scary and arrow. Um, and it says, they're all right and try deeper trees. And I can even say, well, I, I don't think this review is very helpful because like what kind of deeper tree do you mean? Like I, I don't really understand that. Right. And then give some feedback to the other guy. If I went back, I would see it in the other screen. Okay. So uh, and this and once once you'd submitted all your reviews, you would get back to an to an editor that looks like this one, where you can actually edit all of the parts of the of the solution. Okay. Okay. So that's what we're we've gone through about three assignments now in our uh, junior level programming languages course using this interface, implementing interpreters in the style of PLAI, and. Uh, I have, I have, I, we're looking at a lot of data, but one interesting piece of data that we've had so far, so there's an assignment due Thursday at midnight. Everyone had submitted their test cases by Thursday morning, like 30 out of 33 students had. They were still all coding up to the deadline, but they had submitted their test cases and gave each other feedback at least before Thursday. So that was kind of cool, right? <laughs> they had some feedback before they went on implementing. Okay, so that's all I have for you guys for now. Um, I'm happy to take questions and answer lots of questions about both Pirate and Captain Teach. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're running it. Yeah, we're running it yeah, on a public URL right now. So. <laughs> this is why. Yeah. No. <laughs> uh, Edward Edward Teach uh, was Blackbeard. So Captain Teach. Uh, <laughs>